Hey there, Ben Azadi here, founder of Keto Camp, and I'm excited and grateful to provide to you an amazing presentation on five things all keto beginners and pros should know. So allow me to share my screen with you and get into this presentation here. Now notice I put and pros. So if you are not a beginner and you're thinking you're not going to get value from this talk, I can guarantee that you will because it's not going to be the same old same thing that you've heard or read on the internet. So this is going to be great for somebody who's thinking about doing keto, you just started keto, or you've been doing keto for quite some time and you're just not getting the results you want. There's going to be golden nuggets that you can all extract from this presentation. So I'm the founder of Keto Camp and I'm excited to present with the folks, the amazing folks over here at KetoCon. I want to start with this number here, and that number is 150,000. The significance of this number is that's the amount of people that die every single day. Yesterday, 150,000 people took their last breath of air, and today would be the same thing. So just knowing that's that, knowing that you're watching me right now, you're hearing me right now, your heart is beating, it's something to be grateful for. And I always love to start with gratitude because I believe gratitude is a superpower. And if you could harness that power, you're going to accelerate your keto results. So my name is Ben Azadi. Like I mentioned, I am the founder of Keto Camp. We have a top 15 podcast. Uh, we have three books that are out that are all bestsellers. And I'm excited to present with you. Here are a few of my books. If you haven't heard of my books before, um, the Perfect Health Booklet, the Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet, The uh, Power of Sleep, they all ranked number one on day of the release. I also wrote these two books, a Keto Cookbook and a Keto Kickstart Guide that are also available online. Here are some of my friends and mentors that you might recognize, uh, Ben Greenfield, Naomi Widow, Dr. Jason Fong, Drew Manning, who hung out here at Keto Camp HQ with me a few months ago, Dr. Daniel Pampa, who's my mentor, and Dr. Will Cole. So we are on a mission here at Keto Camp to educate and to inspire 1 billion people on planet Earth, because let's face it, there is... The stats out there are sickening when it comes to disease, obesity, and cancer, and our mission here is to put a dent in disease. So before we get into the presentation, or actually, I should say, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the presentation, I would love for you to envision that healthy body that you want, all the results you want on keto and fasting, and the things that you want to accomplish, because thoughts become things, like Bob Proctor says here, if you could see it in your mind, you could hold it in your hands. So I'd love for you right now to take a minute to just envision the results that you want as if they are already accomplished and hold on to that vision. Deal? So how today came to be. I'm going to share a brief history of my background so you can understand where I'm coming from if you are not familiar with my story. This is me, 24 years old, back in 2008, obese, suicidal. And I don't use that word lightly. I was on the internet looking for ways to end my life because I was tired of being unhealthy. And I was just tiptoeing my way through life, hoping to make it safely to death's door. And this is a pinnacle moment in my life because I knew that every time I went to go look for ways to end my life, I would think about my mother. I would think about what I would leave behind for her. And I didn't want her to face that devastation. So I knew it was not going to take my life, but I knew I had to do something because I weighed 250 pounds here at the moment, 34% fat here in the photo, and I was confused by nutritional jargon, and it's worst when you fast forward to today's day and age. So here are some photos of me, uh, 23 years old, 24 years old, obese, both physically and mentally obese, by the way. The thoughts I was, I was thinking was just devastating thoughts, self-limiting beliefs, and I was addicted to a standard American diet aka a stupid American diet, pizza, Coke, and just bad habits, right? So I knew, here is my birthday, 23 years old. I knew my life was headed down a destructive path. This is where I took responsibility. And here's a quote from my book, The Perfect Health Booklet. I'm going to read it out to you here. There is no habit more closely associated with unhappiness than the habits of blaming others for our difficulties. You move closer to your solution the moment you say, I am responsible. It's difficult to say these three words and still feel angry. So for you watching right now, I want you to say it out loud. Somebody in the other room might think you're crazy, but say it out loud. I am responsible. You see, for me, everything changed the moment I said that. Nine months later, 
I went from 250 pounds down to 170 pounds. I lost 80 pounds of toxic fat, 34% body fat down to 6% body fat, size 38 waist down to size 30 waist. And this right here is the most important stat because yes, I finally carved out a physical six pack, six pack, but that's not synonymous with true health. I carved out a mental six pack and I would take that over a physical one any day of the week. And this started my journey in the health space as a personal trainer, the owner of a CrossFit gym, getting into keto back in 2013. And that's what this talk is going to be about. So that's how today came to be part one. How today came to be part two is because of this gentleman here. And chances are, you know, somebody who has diabetes, who had diabetes, or maybe you have diabetes. 60% of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic. My dad was one of them. You see, he immigrated to America from Iran back in the 70s, along with my mother, and they followed that stupid American diet, doing the best they can with what they had. And my dad developed type 2 diabetes, like many of the people here in America. And I watched his health just decline over the years to the point where back in 2013, he suffered a massive stroke from his diabetes, which left him paralyzed, and he lost the ability to speak. And he went to the hospital and he was in the hospital for nine months as I visited my dad every single week for nine months in a row. And if you ever had somebody in a hospital bed for that long, you can relate to how difficult it is to see somebody you love on their deathbed. And every week I visited my dad, his body shrunk, his life was just being sucked out of his eyes and out of his body. And it was a very difficult time in my life to the point where on August 12th, 2014, he ended up passing away. Uh, and I remember getting that phone call from the hospital. I looked at the phone. I saw it was the hospital. My heart sunk in my chest. And they informed me that my dad stopped breathing that morning. And with that passing of my dad came a lot of questions for me. You know, what, why is this happening? Why did it happen to my dad? Why is it happening to the world with statistics such as one out of three women get cancer in their lifetime, one out of two men get cancer in their lifetime, autism, uh, is out of control, cancer, diabetes, obesity, out of control. Why is this happening? I have come to the conclusion with research, years of research, that the same information I'm about to share with you on this presentation, the same information I share all across the world, is the same information that would have saved my dad's life. I also know that I was given that mountain so I could show the world that this mountain can be moved. So if you're dealing with something right now, whether it's diabetes, cancer, whatever it is, the body is incredible. The body can heal. And the information I'm going to share with you is that information that you need to get your life back. Conventional doctors are intellectuals. Einstein said it best. Intellectuals solve problems. Geniuses prevent them. So the fact that you're here on a KetoCon presentation means you're a genius because the folks over at KetoCon, KetoCon are geniuses. And I want to empower you to be a genius here and be preventative and be proactive, not reactive. So there's two types of people in this world, the three percenters who are the geniuses, which who understand for every cause, there is an effect. And then we have the 97 percenters who want instant results and they're just scrambling to get by. They're looking for the latest pill, the latest get weight loss quick hack that we know results in yo-yo dieting and frustration. So what we're talking about today are the three percenters, the geniuses who want long-term health and results. When we look up the keto diet, let's face it, there's a lot of confusion. It's one of the top search terms on Dr. Google. Whether you're looking for how to prevent the keto flu, healthy fats on keto, how to lose weight on keto, is it safe, does it cause heart disease? You're going to get over 100 million results on Dr. Google and it's gonna be enough to leave you paralyzed, especially when you have one website saying you should do it this way, one website saying you should do it the opposite way. How do you know who to trust? How do you know if it's right for you? How do you know? Well, like I said, I've been following and teaching keto since 2013, along with fasting, and I've put in a lot of research. In fact, I've been studying every single day for the last 11 years, three hours every day on average. And I don't say that to impress you. I say it to impress upon you. I've done a lot of research. I've worked with thousands of clients, and I'm going to share with you out of this presentation the five key things that all keto beginners and keto pros must know. I want you to understand that the human body is incredible. The world's greatest physician lives within you, and this is called your innate 
intelligence. It is the human body. You were designed to thrive, not to survive. So as long as you remove the interference, your body will heal. And everything I'm going to share with you here is going to be tools for you to remove the interference and let your body heal. And as a side effect, whatever symptoms you're dealing with goes away by default. And we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. So we know keto is the preferred fuel source. The 70 trillion cells in the body, only two sources of, or only two sources of fuel the 70 trillion cells could choose, which is sugar or fat. We know that burning fat is our birthright. When you were a baby and if you were breastfed, well, breast milk has saturated fat and cholesterol and it helps the development of that brain and it puts that baby in and out of ketosis. So keto, fat is the preferred fuel source. It burns very clean as opposed to glucose and sugar. I compare burning sugar to a Mack truck that is speeding through the highway with all this smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe. It's not gonna be healthy for the environment. When you burn sugar, it's not going to be healthy for your cellular environment. When you convert to burning fat, producing ketones, the preferred fuel source, that is a much cleaner source of fuel for your cell. So I compare that to a Tesla cruising through the highway. So we know studies show it helps with the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, the bowel, the brain, the heart, the stomach, and the uterus. And research comes out just about every month on the amazing benefits of ketones when you do it the right way. And that's what this talk is about, because there's a wrong way to get into ketosis, which you don't get all the benefits that I'm talking about here. And there's a right way, which I'm going to explain to you in the five tips coming up. So let's get right into it. Here are five things all keto beginners and pros must know. Number one, proper bile production is key. This is actually the number one reason why I see people struggle and feel like crap on keto. The liver... As you can see right here pictured, it's a, it's a four and a half pound organ, which I call the soccer mom organ of all organs. She does everything and anything. And let's face it, the liver has been beat up from high sugar diets, eating every two to three hours, alcohol, drugs, toxins, the liver gets beat up. And when that happens, the liver, the liver produces slug, sluggish bile. Bile is a detergent essentially for breaking down fat. Bile stored in the gallbladder and it's released to break down fat. So it helps you break down vitamins A, D, E, and K, all these amazing fat-soluble vitamins you're eating on keto. Bile is what helps you break it down and assimilate and absorb all those amazing nutrients. But when you have sluggish bile production, guess what happens? You can't break down the fat, you feel like crap, and all of a sudden you have stomach issues, digestive issues, which is one of the most common complaints on keto. It wrecks people's stomach. So we want to do things to stimulate healthy bile production. So when you are breaking down that fat, you feel fantastic because you're able to absorb all of those fat-soluble vitamins. So I'm going to share with you here some ways to do that. Here are some ketogenic digestive hacks for you. All of these tips right here are going to help your liver produce healthy bile. So it's really important the first 28 days on keto to start in incorporating some healthy keto sources of fiber. Here are my favorite sources of fiber. Avocados, pecans, steamed collard greens or sauteed, steamed cauliflower, and steamed broccoli and raw coconut. They're keto friendly. They help, help build bile and it helps get some fiber into the first 28 days, which can help with feeling full. Now, the next thing here is bitters. Bitters are better. Bitters are good for the liver. Bitters are so important. Every single day on your ketogenic lifestyle, because keto is a lifestyle, keto is not a diet, it's a metabolic process. So every single day on this ketogenic lifestyle, we want to incorporate some form of bitters which stimulate that bile. So here's a list of my favorite ways to do so, all keto friendly, ginger tea or ginger root, dandelion greens or dandelion tea, artichoke is a keto powerhouse because it helps build bile and it has fiber. Organic shade-grown coffee, my favorite is, uh, you can find over at ketocampcoffee.com. Lemons and limes, radishes, radicchio. By the way, going back to lemons and limes, that's a little hack for you to put in your water, sprinkle it over your meats and your uh, keto proteins is a great way to help break down that protein and fat. 
Cranberries are great. I know what you're thinking. How are cranberries keto? <laughs> they can be keto as long as you're not overdoing it with it. So leave it to about half a cup or less. Cool thing about this right here, basil, thyme, rosemary. These are herbs that you don't even have to eat. All you got to do is smell them to stimulate these stomach enzymes, to stimulate healthy bile production. The human body is incredible. Cilantro and parsley are great, and apple cider vinegar also helps to thin bile. Another key role of bile, by the way, is the removal of toxins. When you are doing a ketogenic lifestyle, your body is going to start burning down fat cells. We want that. Congratulations. However, it releases toxins when you burn fat cells because toxins get stored in fat cells. The human body is so sophisticated, the number one priority for the body is survival. So when toxins enter the body, let's face it, toxins are everywhere. When they enter the body, the body does not want these toxins to enter our vital organs. So it actually activates something called the PPARY pathway, which takes these toxins, puts them into your fat cells. And then when you burn your fat cells on keto, your body cannot burn the toxins. So what happens? They end up into your, dumping into your bloodstream. You auto-intoxicate and you feel like crap saying keto is not good for you. But the reality is you're not able to eliminate the toxins. That was the issue. So stimulating healthy bile with these bitters, toxins are bound to bile and your body will eliminate that. So that's another important component to incorporating bile into the mix, or I should say bitters for bile into the mix. Here are some more hacks for you, part two. Incorporate some MCTs. MCTs stand for medium chain triglycerides. The cool thing about MCTs is that they bypass digestion. So they do not require bile to break them down. They go right into your cells, right into the mitochondria, right into the mitochondria of your brain and turn your brain right on. So here are my top five sources of MCTs in order. Number one, MCT oil. I would just make sure you're going low and slow with this. Start with half a teaspoon and you can work your way up to a maximum of two tablespoons. If you go too fast into MCT oil and you've never had it before, chances are you'll be sent to the bathroom with disaster pants. We don't want that. So go low and slow. Number two is coconut oil. As a matter of fact, 60%, 60% of coconut oil is MCT. Uh, then we have palm kernel oil, raw grass-fed cheese, and grass-fed butter. So those are some great ways to get these MCTs. Does not require bile. Quick hit of energy for you. All right, number two, stop focusing on weight loss. Start focusing on health. There's a big disconnect here. When I see people come into my programs and comment on my videos on YouTube, they want health with weight loss because they've been told, hey, in order to, you have to lose weight to get healthy, right? That's the common thing that's been regurgitated over and over and over. But the reality is this, nobody in the history of this world has ever had a weight problem. When I was obese, weighing 250 pounds, I didn't have a weight problem. You don't have a weight problem. You have, I had a weight symptom. The real problem is the hormones and the cell metabolism. It's cellular inflammation, okay? So we don't lose weight to get healthy. We get healthy to lose weight. So I encourage you to focus on other things other than the number on the scale. Go at least seven weeks without looking at the scale. Now that's too much, go at least a month without looking at the number on the scale because here are some things that can happen. There are so many reasons why the number on the scale fluctuates. It could be the time of the month for you ladies who have your monthly cycle. You retain more water, it'll show on the scale. doesn't mean you're gaining fat. You're just temporarily holding on to extra water. Or you're sore from a workout, it'll show up on the scale. Poor night of sleep, it'll show up on the scale. Stressed out, let's face it, we live in a stressful world. It'll show up on the scale and it'll fluctuate and drive you crazy. So I highly encourage you to pay attention to what I call non-scale victories. Here are some of the ones that I pay attention to, and I have the members of my Keto Camp Academy pay attention to. So not weight loss, we pay attention to measurements, your butt, your hips, your thighs, your neck, your arms. You could buy just a simple measuring tape for $5 on Amazon to make these measurements, keep track of them. That's much more accurate than the number on the scale. Body fat percentage is more accurate than the number on the scale. Taking photos just for you, you to look at. You could always share them if you want, but front, back, and side. I did this when I was going through my weight loss journey. Pay attention to how your clothes fit. Your energy levels, are they increased? Your skin, 
Is your skin improved? Acne is going away. How's your sleep? Do you have more confidence? Are you getting more compl compliments from other people? These are non-scale victories that I encourage you to celebrate and pay attention to. If you're just looking at the number on the scale as th whether or not something's working for you, it's gonna drive you crazy. And I've seen this time after time. Here are some other advanced things that you can do. Here's the exact blood work that I order in every one-on-one -on -one client that I work with. So we have your chemistries, looking at different inflammatory markers like ferritin, C-reactive protein, looking at your liver enzymes, your vitamin D, homocysteine, which is another inflammatory marker, looking at your, your immune system, looking at your thyroid with a complete panel. And then this one's important here at the bottom left, which is an NMR test, nuclear magnetic resonance, looking at your LDL particles, okay? Because total cholesterol does not mean anything. In fact, more people die with normal to low cholesterol than with high cholesterol, according to a Harvard study. So it's not about that. It's about looking at your particles, looking at your inflammatory markers and getting that whole picture, all these pieces of the puzzle, and that'll let you know if something's working or not. So we want to look at all these markers right here. I recommend just taking a screenshot, printing this out, taking it to your doctor and saying, hey, I want all this done. Do it right at the beginning, do it a few months in, and you could see what keto the right way could do for your body. Number three, clean keto versus dirty keto. There is no cookie cutter approach to keto. Like I mentioned, over 100 million results on Dr. Google. Most of the ways that it's being taught is a dirty keto. You can do keto the wrong way and get into ketosis, but you're not gonna reduce inflammation and you're not gonna extend your health span and your lifespan. So I'm gonna break down the difference between the two. This is very important to understand. Here is a list of dirty keto foods to avoid. This is gonna cause inflammation around your cells and these receptor sites that communicate with your hormones, when they're blunted from inflammation, you're not gonna be able to feel good. You're not gonna be able to burn fat and it's gonna create disease if you don't take care of it. So all these foods right here create inflammation in the body around your cell membrane. It is the vegetable oils, canola, corn, soybean, cottonseed, safflower, peanut, sunflower, grapeseed oil. Now, let me share something with you. This is going to be an alarming stat right now. I recently interviewed a professor from MIT, Brian Peskin, on my Keto Camp podcast, and we were talking about vegetable oils. He has a lot of great work talking about vegetable oils, showing research on the dangers of vegetable oils. And I asked Professor Peskin, which is worse? smoking a cigarette <laughs> every day or eating cooked vegetable oils. And he said, let's look at the statistics out there. And the stats are this. If somebody was going to smoke two packs of cigarettes every single day for 25 years, their chances of getting cancer, lung cancer, is about 16% within those 25 years, one six. Now compare that to somebody eating cooked vegetable oils, these oils you see right here in front of you, for 25 years every single day, their chances of getting cancer and or heart disease is 86%. So yeah, these will get you into ketosis, but it'll shorten your lifespan and you're gonna feel bad. So there was a study in the book, The PEO Solution by Brian Peskin that showed a plate of French fries that were fried in canola oil, the top oil you see here, resulted in 132 days of cell membrane inflammation. Okay, yikes. So your body cannot burn vegetable oils. It'll get stuck on your cell membrane, creating inflammation, creating dysfunction, and symptoms will manifest. But the issue is not the symptom. The issue is these inflammatory fats. And I added non-organic animal protein and veggies just because we want to eliminate pesticides and herbicides, which we know drive heavy metals deeper inside of our tissues. Farm fish has higher levels of something called PCBs which stand for polychlorinated biphenyls. They are carcinogens, also sh farm shrimp as well. So we want to avoid this and we want to switch over. Actually, here's another list uh, of things that I recommend in my academy to avoid at least the first 28 days. Uh, legumes. So you might be thinking, yeah, I'm doing keto. I'm not having legumes. But a lot of people don't understand that peanuts like peanut butter and chickpeas like hummus, which are keto friendly, can cause inflammation in most people. So in my academy, I teach for the first 28 days, eliminate this. And I recommend you do, you do the same. First 28 days or starting today, just eliminate these. You can add them back, but it'll give you a drop in inflammation. So corn, 
Soy, with the exception of organic natto and tempeh, I like those, but anything else with soy is a no-go. Potato starch, which surprisingly is found in keto breads and keto bars and keto products, that'll create an insulin spike. Uh, burned and blackened meat, so if you're having steak and your protein, uh, we want to make sure we're not burning that meat. It'll create advanced glycation end products, not good. Nightshades like tomatoes and potatoes, I know that's not keto friendly, but some people could have it in small amounts and still be in keto. I don't recommend it the first 28 days. Goji berries, peppers, and eggplants. And this might surprise you here, spinach and almonds. I know those are keto friendly and they're somewhat healthy. However, they're higher in oxalates. And I've noticed if somebody just eliminates spinach and almonds for 28 days, they feel so much better. Also, uh, almonds are harder on the gut. It's hard to digest almonds unless you're soaking them and doing them the right way. So a lot of these keto bars and keto pizzas, which are much better than regular bars and regular pizzas, they use an almond base. I recommend just for those 28 days to eliminate that and watch your body heal. Remember I said, remove the interference, let the body heal. This is exactly how you do it. Next on the list is pasteurized dairy, with the exception of something like grass-fed butter and grass-fed ghee. But most people have an inflammatory response to pasteurized dairy. I think it's better to have raw grass-fed dairy. That's okay. But pasteurized cheese, a lot of these cheeses are going to cause inflammation. So just for 28 days, avoid that. And grains, of course, are not keto-friendly, but you can have a little and still be in keto. I recommend avoiding all grains during your first 28 days here. Now let's talk about the clean keto foods. Okay, keto coffee is a fantastic option for you to just swap out your breakfast, breakfast with starting today or tomorrow. Uh, it means you're having coffee with some grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee with some MCT oil and some sea salt. That's a little hack for you. Throw in some sea salt with your coffee or tea because coffee is a diuretic which causes you to lose more electrolytes. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So it's going to help you replenish. So throw in some sea salt with your coffee. So grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, grass-fed and finished beef and lamb, pastured organic eggs, coconuts, coconut oil, MCT oil, avocado, avocado oil, olives, olive oil. These green leafy vegetables are fantastic. Here are my favorite nuts, macadamia, walnuts, pecans. I also like peely nuts. I didn't put it on there, but I just thought of it. Bison, or organ meats, and organic pastured poultry and mushrooms. Here's a little note for you in the bottom. The first 28 days, I recommend increasing your protein, okay? Because it's going to actually help satiate you. It's going to help you feel full. It's going to help activate these um, satiety hormones, satiety chemicals. You're going to feel better with more protein, especially the first 28 days. And no, it's not going to knock you out of ketosis. Um, you would have to eat such a massive acute amount for it to give you a big glucose spike. So don't worry about that. It's actually going to do more good than it is going to do harm. So that's a list. I hope you took a screenshot or took some notes there. We also have this, which is important, especially if you're traveling or on the go or if you're a mom and you want things available for you so you don't have to go to a bad option. Here are my favorite healthy on-the-go keto foods. Sardines, oysters, uh, sockeye salmon, mackerel, anchovies, macadamia nuts, which I already mentioned, nori, seaweed crackers, take some hard-boiled eggs, avocados, coconut butter, fat bombs, guacamole with epic pastured pork rinds or bacon chips, sugar-free jerky, smoothies, uh, puddings, homemade unsweetened popsicles, which you could just do a Google search for, plant-based pea protein powder, bulletproof bars, epic bars, and paleo valley beef sticks. These are all my go-tos when I am on the go. I also recommend following the 2, -two, -two rule starting day one of your ketogenic journey. We want to teach the body to start utilizing fatty acids instead of sugar. I explained the difference between burning fat and burning sugar. Think Mack truck versus Tesla. So here's a great way to do so. Every single day, each day, consume the following. Two tablespoons of olive oil or avocado oil, two tablespoons of coconut oil or MCT oil. Just remember, go low and slow if you're doing MCT oil. Two tablespoons of grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee. I personally prefer the ghee. And then two teaspoons, not tablespoons, but teaspoons of sea salt. The sea salt is important. You heard about the keto flu. You heard about uh, brain fog. You heard about fatigue when those who, with those who have started keto. Maybe it happened to you in the past and you stopped keto because of it. One of the reasons is a loss of electrolytes. When you transition and you start burning fat instead of sugar, 
your kidneys are going to release a lot of excess water weight, which is great. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to look lighter. However, along with that water weight or that water goes electrolyte, sodium, potassium, some of these minerals. And if you don't replenish that strategically, you might get the keto flu. You might feel like crap. So that's where I came up with this keto camp cocktail, which I talk a lot about in my podcast and in the um, keto camp podcast and also on the keto camp YouTube channel. And you can see the recipe right here. Every morning, I recommend at least for the first seven days drinking this 16 ounces of high quality water, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Remember, that'll help stimulate bile. A teaspoon of cream of tartar, which is a great way to get in some extra potassium and a pinch of sea salt. Mix it all together, drink that, and make sure you're throwing in some sea salt in your coffee and you're not gonna be dehydrated. You're gonna replenish the right way and you won't get things like the keto flu. By the way, in my Keto Camp Academy, I've had over 500 members go through it. Not one member has reported getting the keto flu. So if you're worried about that, don't worry. If you do it this way, you're going to be absolutely fine. What about the, the uh, sweeteners? I spelled it wrong, but what about the sweeteners on artificial sweeteners on keto? Here are the ones that are good versus the ones that are not approved. So we have, at least according to me and the people I've worked with and what I've seen not work versus what does work. So here are the ones I recommend not consuming. You can look at your keto bars and keto products. Make sure it doesn't have these ingredients. Xylitol, maltitol, sorbitol, mannitol, aspartame, sucralose, saccharin, and acesulfame potassium. Those are the ones that I've seen cause the most issues with the gut, with sugar cravings, and sometimes even a glucose and insulin response. These three are much safer. I would use a pure monk fruit, pure stevia, and or erythritol. So yeah, they're okay, but just pay attention. When you have these approved artificial sweeteners, if it's leading to more sugar cravings, more carb cravings, you might need to eliminate them altogether because it can happen for some people. So if you find yourself being hungrier and having more sugar cravings, even though you're having the healthier sweeteners, you might need to eliminate them short term until you build up that metabolic machinery a little bit more. Number four is to not chase ketones, chase results. I see so many people out there frustrated because their ketones are not high and they're testing the wrong way. I'm gonna to explain to you how to test and what are the optimal numbers to look for, but we don't chase ketones here at Keto Camp. We chase results. There's a big difference. We don't even want high ketones because it means your body and your brain is not even utilizing them. There's a sweet spot to look for and I'm gonna share that sweet spot with you shortly. But when we look out there, there are different ways to test your ketones. There's blood, there's urine, there's breath. I believe the gold standard right now is blood. With that being said, there are some new devices um, out there with breath that are Im impressive. But the gold standard, I think for you right now, the best approach I think for you right now would be the blood. The reason I don't like urine so much is because when your body starts using the ketones efficiently, it won't show up in the urine strip and it might, you might think you're not in ketosis but you are, you're just using them very efficiently. So let's talk about blood. That's the one I recommend. I personally use Keto Mojo. Uh, here are the optimal glucose and ketone numbers to look for. We'll start at the top left here. So the sweet spot I've noticed is 0.8 to 2.8. That is the sweet spot for blood ketones. For fasting blood glucose, the optimal range is 72 to 92. All right, so if you're hitting these numbers right there, know that your body is aging gracefully. Let's talk a little bit about some advanced testing. Maybe you want to see how your insulin is doing, how your beta cells in your pancreas are doing from a meal. Well, here's how you can test. One hour postprandial, meaning after a meal, you could test your blood glucose and ketones. Again, we still want your ketones to be that same range, all right? 0 0.8, 2.8. So you don't, you don't want that keto meal to knock you out of ketosis but your blood glucose, we want to test. And after a meal, one hour, we want it to be 120 or below. That's optimal. Two hours after a meal, we want that ketones to still be in that range, but your glucose should be over, under 100. Some things you can do if you find yourself not hitting these numbers, go for a walk right after a meal. 10-minute walk could reduce this by 20%. could reduce your blood sugar, I've seen, by 20%. Just a 10-minute walk. So that's some advanced testing for you. But I also re I do recommend testing and not guessing. It's a great way to really have some markers. And for some people, it helps them stay inspired, motivated, and it helps them stay accountable. And there's some cool apps you can use to sync this information with. 
and look at your trends. Number five, the last one here, for the love of God, <laughs> stop the snacking. Even if it's keto friendly, stop the snacking. I'm going to explain why. When we look at the body, right? Insulin is the only fat storage, storage hormone we have in the body. There's over 600 hormones in the human body. The human body is incredible. At least 600 hormones that we know of at the moment, but only one of them signals fat storage. And that is insulin. Insulin is the bully of the block. So we know that there's at least eight fat burning hormones in the body. Think of these fat burning hormones that are these children, right? Playing in the playground and they're having fun. They're burning fat. All of a sudden, insulin is called to that playground and these fat burning hormones, they scatter. They run away because they cannot coexist. Insulin is the bully of the block. What's my point? When you're snacking, even if it's the healthiest keto snack in the world, even if it's those foods I mentioned, which are the healthy keto foods, you're still going to raise glucose and insulin and you're going to be in a fed state. The average American eats 17 to 21 times per day. And I know you're thinking, how is that even true, Ben? Well, think about the handful of almonds, the sip of that kombucha, the bite of that yogurt, the protein bar, the coffee with the cream and the, and the sugar. Every time you raise glucose and insulin, it's a meal to the body. And the average person does that 17 to 21 times per day. They're always in this fed state. Not good. So we want to make sure we are adding my favorite tool in the toolbox with keto, which is intermittent fasting. Okay. I recommend doing this after seven days of doing keto. We first start with breakfast, lunch, dinner, keto friendly meals. After doing that for seven days, you add this 18, six schedule. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. So an 18, six schedule is my favorite schedule for most people out there, meaning 18 hours out of the day, you're in a fasted state. You're just having water and some sea salt. If you want to have your coffee or your tea during that fasting window, that's okay if it'll help extend and get you through that fast. But if you want the most benefits, just water and some sea salt. Then six hours out of the day is when you're having your keto meals. So maybe you have two keto meals with plenty of protein, plenty of fat, eating until full within that six hour eating window. So what would that look like on your schedule is what you're thinking. 12 to 6 p.m., eating window, eating keto-friendly foods. Outside of that, fasting window. Do that every single day. Your body's going to pull out fat during the fasting window. But also what's going to happen during your fast is this amazing process called autophagy. The definition, the literal definition, the Greek definition of autophagy is eat thyself. Your body is so stinking smart. You have this innate intelligence within your body. Like I said, the world's greatest physician that it goes through this cleansing process. It's a biological process that removes body's accumulated toxins and recycles damaged cell components. So I'm going to explain this to you in an analogy that's going to make sense. This is the power of autophagy. Think about this refrigerator right here. We have all these foods that have an expiration date on the label. What will happen if you let all the foods inside of this refrigerator expire? It's going to look disgusting. It's going to be nasty. Now picture this. Instead of taking all these expired groceries and kind of throwing them into the trash and getting rid of them, instead of doing that, you just push all these expired groceries toward, towards the back of the fridge. You go and you order new groceries and you put these new groceries in front of the expired groceries and you close that door. What's going to happen? Mold, disease, bacteria. It's going to be a toxic environment. Well, guess what? The human body is like this refrigerator. Out of the 70 trillion cells in the body, 70 billion of them are required to be recycled and regenerated every single day. You have cells, protein, mitochondria that have expiration dates on them. And if you're not taking the time to activate autophagy, which is the process of cleaning out this refrigerator, cleaning out your cells, your body is going to develop a symptom, disease, dysfunction. So autophagy is that process of cleaning out the fridge, the body. So think of Pac-Man going within your cells, cleaning out those cells. And if Pac-Man says, oh, this cell is a senescent zombie cell, there's no function here, then it signals something called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, cell suicide. And then it stimulates a healthy stem cell, which is a new cell. That is one of the best ways to anti-age, to burn fat, to live a long, healthy life. As a matter of fact, Dr. Thomas Seafried, 
who is a world-renowned oncologist who wrote the book, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. You might have known, you might have read his work before. This is his quote. If you complete a seven-day water fast only once per year, you would reduce your risk of cancer by 95%. Okay, that's a powerful quote from a leader in cancer research. That's because of the power of autophagy. So you will get some autophagy around the 16, 18 hour mark. If you do a fasted workout, you get even more. Here are three ways to practice fasting right now, whether it is during uh, COVID or not. It, it doesn't matter. These are my three favorite ways to do it. An 18-6, which I mentioned, a 24 schedule. And if you want even more autophagy, maybe you throw in a 24 hour fast from time to time. So a dinner to dinner uh, is what I would recommend. But when you do that with keto, no fasting, your body is just going to burn fat. It's going to get rid of damaged cells. And you're going to feel like a rock star. Your skin's going to improve. Your mental focus is going to improve. And so many amazing things start to happen when you follow the way we were designed to live. We're hardwired this way. So here are some free resources for you. I have a free keto guide over at ketokickstartguide.com. You can get my free, my best-selling fasting book for free over at fastingcheatcheat.com. As a thank you for watching, for watching the entire presentation. I have some kits like Keto Kickstart kits and some other things I put together over at ketocampkit.com. But there's, and then I have my YouTube channel and my podcast. It's called the Keto Camp Podcast and the Keto Camp YouTube channel. Uh, I want to also just finish the presentation with this. I just share with you the exact structure that's going to teach your body to burn fat instead of sugar. It's going to teach your body to do fasting the right way, to prevent things like the keto flu, to finally do keto the right way. But none of that will work to the extent that you want it to work if you don't have two things. And that's love and gratitude. As woo-woo as this might sound to you, love and gratitude are two of the biggest healers that we have in this world. You cannot heal a body that you hate. You cannot heal a body that has hate. So I encourage you to practice self-love. I encourage you to practice gratitude. Have love for this amazing vessel and keep that gratitude. Keep it in front of you along with what I just shared and it'll accelerate your results. These are two of the biggest healers that we have. So I want to thank you for your time and your energy and your attention. And I had a great time sharing with you today. Thank you.